All right, everyone. I'm excited to have Kelsey Hess on the show today to talk all things fasting as we get ready for our Keon second annual five day fast and just going over kind of fasting 101 and all the questions people have. So Kelsey, happy new year. Happy new year. Happy 2021. We made it. I know. Isn't it true? Everyone saying that just get rid of 2020 and move on. So to start the year off, I think we did this last January about the same time talking about fasting and Keon, we did a get Keon did a really successful popular around the world five day fast and talk about kind of what you learned we you guys ran it last year. And why is it good to do in January and then we'll kind of go in the basic definitions of it. Yeah, totally. So this is actually our third annual third? fasting challenge. Wow. Yeah, the first one was a little small. It was kind of our first our first time doing a challenge. But yeah, third annual. Um, so the reason why we do a fasting challenge to kick off the year, I think, first of all, is because, you know, typically in January, people are ready to prioritize their health again. We've all been kind of drinking and overeating around the holidays. And it's just a, it's just mentally a good time to sort of hit the reset button and just say, okay, you know, I'm ready to kind of turn over a, a clean slate here. So I think a lot of people are, are kind of in that mindset in January. And the reason why we do a fasting challenge, uh, there's a lot of reasons, actually. We try to uh, form our challenges around different types of health methods that are free and that are simple and that anyone can do, no matter where you live, uh, what type of environment you live in, whatever your health status is, we try to, to focus our challenges on those. And so fasting is one of those free, uh, quote unquote, simple <laughs> methods that uh, everyone you know, has access to. It actually saves you money for the yeah. most part and time because you're not spending money on groceries or spending time cooking. So, um, and, and I think fasting, you know, it has a lot of physical health benefits for sure. There's a ton of research out about um, how it can benefit your brain health, your digestive health, uh, your metabolism, body composition, autophagy and longevity, all of these things um, that, that, you know, animal, mostly animal studies tell us that that fasting can do. But I think there's also some really interesting mental and spiritual benefits from the practice of fasting. Most religions have some form of, of, fasting kind of woven into their traditions. It's, it's been a part of our evolution for as long as we've been humans, you know, we haven't always had access to food 24 seven in the refrigerator. <laughs> so yeah. um, it's something that, that humans are kind of designed to be able to, to do. And with that, there are some positive benefits that come from abstaining from food for a certain period of time. And, and we can kind of talk about what that actually looks like and what fasting actually is for some well, people. For sure. And I think, you know, going over the benefits and when people I'll put the link in the show notes to sign up for the Keon challenge, they get this fasting decoded book, you know, what is fasting? Because I think as I just shared that people get scared, think fasting, a five-day fasting challenge means I'm drinking water for five days and they freak out. And I said before we started that I posted something about the fasting challenge in January and people, a female commented like, oh, it's so bad for women. And why do people, you know, always talk about fasting? And I do agree. It's not ideal for women. And we'll get into that, why women are different than men. And as Dr. Stacey Sims has, a, you know, her book Roar really shows that women are not small men and all of her programs she's done over the last few years. But fasting itself doesn't mean that it's just a water only fast. So let's mm -hmm. kind of start, start with the different types of fasting. People will get the great handbook for free. It's an ebook once they sign up on the link to join the challenge. But what do you find is like the basic ones we can go over and review? Yeah, so there are a lot of different types of fasts out there. For the purposes of our challenge and our content, we've kind of narrowed it down to three. Um, so, so the first one is intermittent fasting and you're totally right with the fasting challenge. You don't have to fast for the whole five days. You can kind of choose your own adventure. And that's sort of how our challenges and our, our ebook is built. So, um, the first option is, uh, intermittent fasting, time restricted feeding, circadian fasting, whatever you want to call it. It's, it's really just, um, going without food for a period of time, shortening your feeding window during the day. 
And this can look anything like just a 12 hour fast. So it's basically just overnight. You stop eating at 8 p.m. You eat again at 8 a.m. Um, and don't consume any calories in between that, that window. And I think when you say that to people and, and, and they're like, oh, that's fasting. <laughs> yeah, you know, technically when you sleep, you fast, you're not eating. So I think fasting can be a scary term, um, but really it can just look like a 12 hour overnight fast. And that's the one that's typically called time restricted feeding or, or circadian fasting. Um, intermittent fasting though is a, a bit of a larger term. You can go anywhere from 12 to 22 hours. Uh, for your daily fast. So that could look anywhere, that could look something like you don't eat breakfast and you just eat lunch and dinner that day, or you just eat uh, one meal a day. Um, so that could be like your 22 hour fast. We have a two hour feeding window to, to eat dinner. Um, and I'll kind of get into like the different uh, fasts that I do and do not recommend for women specifically, because I know that came up. Um, but then the, the second option that we offer, offer is a uh, we, we actually made up this term and it's kind of floating around in the internet now, which is mm -hmm. sort of funny, uh, but the caloric liquid fast. And uh, I think this is just audio, so you can't see my, my fingers in quotation <laughs> we'll marks. It on video too. <laughs> um, but the caloric liquid fast, it, the fast is in quotation marks because if you are taking in calories, you're technically not fasting uh, for in the technical term of things. But uh, you do get a lot of the benefits of fasting, specifically for gut health and um, gut rest. So the caloric liquid fast typically looks like taking in some amount of calories, but it's just in a liquid form. Mm -hmm. um, so you're basically giving your digestion a break. This is kind of in the back in the old days, what they would call like a cleanse or a detox, but I, those are gross words. I don't really like them. <laughs> um, so the caloric liquid fast, you know, it can look anywhere between three to five days uh, of just taking in your calories in a liquid form. So you really want to focus on gut friendly and gut healing liquids when you're doing this. You don't want to be uh, consuming a bunch of really sugary smoothies or like Diet Coke or any of these things that can kind of wreck your microbiome. The, the focus of this one is, is gut health and uh, everything else stems from gut health. So there's a lot of other benefits too. But uh, typically it looks like bone broth. Um, I really like something called Thord Mediclear, which is kind of like a prepackaged uh, gut health shake, but there's no, there's no junk in it. It's, it's really good. You could also do a, a smoothie fast, but like make sure they're really low sugar smoothies, not a lot of fruit, kind of just veggies and, and, and gut healing components there. So those are kind of like three examples of a, what a caloric liquid fast could look like. And if you're familiar with Prolon, uh, Walter Longo's new uh, like prepackaged fasting mimicking diet, it kind of goes along similar principles where it's you can still consume some calories and get benefits of fasting. It's kind of like a calorie reduced uh, fast in a way, but his his system is not uh, is not liquid. So we just find that it's typically easier for people to, to do some sort of liquid fast instead of buy that system or try to make it themselves. So that's the second option. Um, and then the third option is what m I think most people think of when they, when they think of a fast. Uh, we also coined this term a, a non-caloric fast. Um, so this would be no calories. Um, you're only consuming liquids with zero calories. So water, sparkling water, tea, black coffee, all those things are, are technically fine during uh, one of these fasts because the main goal of uh, a non-caloric liquid fast is to stimulate autophagy, which is uh, that, that uh, process of cellular cleanup that gives us those awesome disease prevention and longevity benefits. So you're basically avoiding anything that will turn off autophagy. So uh, to get nerdy, anything that stimulates mTOR, that like growth pathway in your body, uh, you want to keep that turned off. So you're basically consuming no calories, just, just liquid. Uh, and some people do this just water, but some people like to do tea or, or coffee or sparkling water to kind of mix it up. So those are the three options that we, we cover in our ebook. Obviously there are many more fasting options than that. You can do like alternate day fasting. Um, you can do the one meal a day, 
there's so many options out there, but we, we sort of narrowed it down to those three for people for simplicity's sake. Yeah. But that's all kind of similar. If you do the alternate day fasting is somewhat similar, but doing a one meal a day is in a liquid is what I did over the years. And I think it's over five years ago. I talked about this last show we did is a five day jumpstart challenge that I didn't know it wasn't, we didn't know the word OMAD back then. And yeah, you know, it just was intuitively here's to rest your digestive system. Here's what we need to do. Stop eating three hours before bed. And when you are in that eating window, you're having say like we were doing Dr. Axe's keto feast shake and you're doing bone broth and you can do herbal liver detox tea and you can do water with sea salt and mineral drops and then one main meal a day, but it's a, a protein and a vegetable and healthy fat. And, and it's, I used to do vegetable juices too in there. And so you have like almost so much stuff, you know, like I can't drink anything else. And it was in say an eight hour window, but we didn't know five years ago, it was intermittent fasting and it was OMAD and time restricted feeding. But that's to me, I made it up just, that's how it feel like we should have restrict what you're eating to let you have your digestive system have that reset and reboot. So your body's not always have to digest food like even not eating meat for the week would be probably good, but getting your amino acids from your bone broth because meat's so hard to digest for people. So it's funny just how over the years we start to have words for everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Like we used to eat, you know, feast <laughs> and fast. And now it's like, okay, we got to organize a challenge to get people to realize you don't need to eat seven in the morning and have a snack and eat lunch and then snack and eat dinner. And then they have snacking after dinner until they go to bed and then you end up eating 16 hours a day. A day. It's funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, it, none of these concepts are new, right? It's, <laughs> they've just kind of been uh, defined and given terms, I think over the years as the science kind of grows in this area. But yeah, I think, that, you know, um, a lot of the benefits there are a lot of benefits that come when you're not eating, I think is what people don't realize. Your body sort of turns things up and turns some things down. And, and we can, if we can find a balance between the feeding, which obviously there are benefits to eating food, lots of benefits to eating food. There are also benefits to not eating food. So if we can kind of strike a balance between those two, uh, Mm -hmm. I think that's when we can really experience a lot of robust health. So going back to the different types and and where people can start, I think this would probably be a concern for a lot of practitioners, health coaches, because people will just go to the extreme, you know, the the typical people that are going to follow Keon and Ben Greenfield and they're the overachiever, ambitious, you know, (laughs) high performing individuals that are just going to do more is better which isn't always great, you know, that more is better mentality can get you in trouble. So if Mm -hmm. you haven't been doing any fasting, intermittent fasting, 12 to 16 hour overnight, are you going to pick a five day water only fast? And those people that do that is probably not the most beneficial for them or cause possibly uh, being a stress and being a lot of (laughs) uncomfortable you know, hunger issues. And if they're been eating a high carb diet, they're not fat adapted. You know, there's things that they should be doing beforehand, right. To prepare Mm -hmm. for a fast and not jump into a five day water only fast that should be supervised in a health spa where you're more, you know, monitored than just Mm -hmm. on your own. So how should people get ready and figure out, okay, where am I at now? Let's meet you where you're at to find the right choice for you. Yeah, the, you made so many good points there. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I guess first thing is, yes, I 100% agree with you. If you have never fasted before, you've never really, you know, made any dietary shifts before, definitely don't jump into a five day water fast. Bad idea. It's going to be not only may have some negative health effects, it's going to be miserable. That's like kind of going from drinking five cups of coffee a day to no caffeine. Yeah. You, you know, you're going to get headaches. It's going to be really hard. And there's no reason to, to put yourself through that if, uh, if it's your first time, you know. Um, I think if you're going to do a, a, a five-day water fast, you should have a very specific reason why you're doing that. For example, I've fasted for like a decade and I've never done 
a five day water fast. I've never had, you know, a really strong medical or spiritual or mental reason to, to do that. So I, that's like the, the expert level kind of thing. And you should definitely be supervised by a practitioner if you're going to do something like that. Yeah. So yes, you're totally right. If you're just starting off, totally start with the 12 hour fast. I think that's really easy for a lot of people to do it. it you know, you're kind of just removing any mindless snacking after dinner, waking up and waiting to eat breakfast until you've kind of hit that 12 hour mark. So I think that's really easy to do for a lot of people. You're sleeping for most of it. <laughs> so it doesn't take too much willpower, or like lifestyle change to make that happen. Um, if you're going to go beyond that, you're right. You probably need to prepare a little bit. You need to make sure that you're eating mostly whole nutritious foods, that you're not consistently spiking your blood sugar throughout the day by relying on a lot of sugary carbohydrates. Um, it's best to, if you're going to prepare for something like, you know, five days of a, a 16 to 20 hour intermittent fasting, you, the week before you really want to focus on removing any of the junk. So <laughs> avoiding, you know, alcohol, sugar, a lot of refined carbs, kind of wean yourself into that and make sure that if you can, you're getting fat adapted because that is what your body is going to be relying on while you're fasting. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure you have a lot of tips on, on how, to, how people can get fat adapted, but, you know, kind of stick to the, the low carb diet there for a couple of days or so beforehand. Well, I was trying to post that this week, promoting the fasting challenge. And I put that on my Facebook page this week. I'm like, okay, this is preparation week. You know, let's mm -hmm. start cleaning up the diet and really it's, it's keep it simple, eat yeah. real food, you know, not stuff from a package, a bag, you know, get your protein, you're going to if you eat meat, you know, barbecue, whatever your meat, and then have a vegetable if it's Brussels, what's in season, you know, we made Brussels sprouts and bacon and, mm. or um, cauliflower, I've been into roasting this cauliflower and butter and olive oil. And so there's different things you can do, start doing that now, get rid of the packaged stuff, get rid of the alcohol, get rid of the sugary beverages, and even stop eating fruit and just focus on more of the protein and healthy fats and getting your good fibrous prebiotic vegetables. Mm -hmm. Then that just kind of automatically become intermittent fasting a little bit more because you're not as hungry. You're full and satisfied. You've lost those cravings and you are not eating 24 seven. So mm -hmm. it just kind of happens that you're fasting without knowing it, but you're preparing kind of cleaning house internally and externally <laughs> clean your kitchen out yeah. get rid of the Christmas stuff and throw stuff those cookies away and put things in the freezer that you don't need for a long time and just focus on the real food part but getting yeah. to sleep you know it's the, what I call the holistic method that we need to work on all those other elements so to me I call it a jump start five-day challenge is, is detoxing your life you know getting the right sleep is so important part of this doing a fast because that's you know, when you're fasting, but it's also really taking an advantage of that cell autophagy, that internal housekeeping service that comes, takes care of your body while you're sleeping. And if you're not getting good quality sleep, then we need to look at why and, you know, cleaning up your diet should help stop eating before bed should help, but also life stress and, and working on stress management techniques that we've talked about. But yeah, it's that holistic approach to really improve your experience in a fast that it's not just you know, not eating, but you got to work on your lifestyle behaviors as well to really benefit from this experience. Don't you think? Yeah. And to make it easier on yourself yeah. is, is really like the, the thing that you're going to feel if you're, if you're kind of all over the place and then you jump into a fast, it's just not going to be a good experience. So for sure, you know, that's kind of why we start the opt-in period for our fasting challenge every year, a few weeks early so that people can set aside time to prepare. We send out, you know, emails with tips and, uh, tips to prepare for your fast and, and what to do every day so that you can go into it feeling uh, prepared and comfortable and, and have the best experience that, that you can have. Mm -hmm. uh, it should not be a suck fest, you know, it, it, it will, it, it will in some ways, it mostly mentally, but we don't want anyone to, to be struggling too hard uh, during these challenges. So yep. Take a week, clean out the crap, uh, get yourself prepared. And then if you're just starting out, start with that 12 hour 
If you want to kind of push it a little bit, you could do, you know, the, the daily intermittent fasting 16 to 18 hours. Um, that's really as far as I go, if you're a beginner, I would say another thing to, to kind of help you figure out where to start if you've never done a fast before, or even if you kind of want to try something new, the way we break it out in our ebook is by your goal for fasting. And so kind of like I explained uh, the, the three different methods, typically intermittent fasting, if you want some sort of body composition benefits, if you've got some goals or, or kind of just want to um, get metabolically healthy, intermittent fasting is probably going to be your best bet. Um, again, the benefits all kind of overlap here, but trying to simplify things for people. Uh, if you want gut health, um, the caloric liquid fast is going to be where, where you want to go. And you can, you can kind of tailor these things to where you're starting. So if you're brand new and you want to try a caloric liquid fast, maybe only do it for one day or two days. Um, maybe only do it for two of the meals of your day and then eat a normal dinner kind of ease yourself into it, you can sort of tailor it to, to however you'd like. And then again, not for beginners, but the, the non-caloric liquid fast, if you've got some, some greater ambitions and you're sort of looking for the longevity benefits, you can do that for any from one to five days. Uh, so it's kind of mix and match. And uh, the, the non-caloric liquid fast is going to be best for those autophagy benefits for sure. But you still get some of those with the other kinds of fasts as well. So going over our list of questions, so I want to make sure, so tips to making fasting easier, you just kind of mentioned anything else, like making it easier, I think for I would add, you know, talking about where to start fasting, but activity wise during the week, I would say, you know, make sure you kind of keep busy. Like I, mm -hmm. it's 1030, I haven't eaten yet because I had a client before our call and I was getting work ready and I, I went for a run this morning and then I'm starting to get hungry now, but it's, it's knowing that you just kind of, you have stuff to occupy your day. I find yeah. it intuitively, you know, eat when you're hungry, but you don't realize you've been fasting since I stopped eating yesterday. I think I ate dinner three o'clock, three 30. So I stopped eating at four because I stop. I do better. My schedule to intermittent fast is stop eating during the weekdays before bed. And I try to eat like at three o'clock my main meal. So anyways, I think it just, if you have stuff during your day, you, you stop focusing on food. I think the biggest thing people just like, Oh, when, when, when am I eating next? What's my yeah. next meal? And they're always thinking about what they're eating instead of, you know, I like having one main meal that we, okay, we're going to have burgers and an egg and a, we did bacon, egg and a grass fed burger and some pickles yesterday. I mean, just Yum. have one main meal. It makes it easier, but during the day I have, you know, if you have appointments or things going on that you can do or go for a walk, you know, it makes it easier yeah. and light exercise, you know, not trying to go do a heavy long run or heavy hit training or something like that, I think is another thing for exercise that we kind of take everything, tone it down, right? What do you find for making it easier when you're fasting? Yeah, I think staying busy is, is definitely key, but stay busy with things that don't stress you out. Yeah, uh, exactly. Because no stress. <laughs> no stress. Stress is the last thing you want when you're fasting because fasting is a stressor. So uh, we, we really want to avoid stacking those stressors on top of each other, including the, the you know, excess exercise. If you have a really really stressful week at work, you know, maybe, maybe fasting is going to be a little bit difficult. So stay busy with things that don't stress you out. Uh, we've, uh, we've all done that. I'm bored. I'm going to go stand in front of the refrigerator thing. So, uh, try, try not to be bored <laughs> reading a lot of walking, cleaning your house or like oh, doing I have a book. So there's this book oh, called yeah. boundless. That's <laughs> so freaking gigantic i'm trying to read it because you know i'm coaching for ben yeah now and oh, i have to finish this book I'm like, oh my god I, this book is taking me forever to read so if it's you massive. want something to do get boundless and you'll just there you spend <laughs> hours reading that book over and over again yep but yeah so sorry to interrupt but i think the big word you said is what i talk about all the time is chronic stress and what is fasting it's a hormetic stress, a good stress, but on and off stresses are good, but anything excessive becomes stressful in a negative way that we want to make sure we don't have our stress cup 
overfilling mm -hmm. by too many external stressors, like overtraining, high intensity, long duration exercise, too much of anything can overfill that beaker of stress. So how does fasting, how do we mitigate all these different life stressors that we have and make sure fasting is beneficial stress, not a negative stress. And that can tie into women and athletes as well. Yeah. Yeah. How, how can we, how can we do it? Oh man, I can't tell you, but you, only you know how much stress you have, yeah. but I, you know, you, if you tune into your body, you'll know when it's too much. Mm -hmm. Um, there, there are definitely like specific side effects for women for sure, but poor sleep, uh, can it getting bingy mood disorders, those kind of things will, if, if you're experiencing those, you, you may know that fasting is, is a little too much for you right now. And I think just take a step back and look at your life and, and, and kind of rate your stress, stress levels on a one to 10. And I think if you're, you know, above that five, maybe take it easy. Maybe don't, don't fast right now. It, we're, we all have seasons, right? If you're, if you're a busy mom, you have a, a busy career, you're kind of working all day and then taking care of the kids may not be the best season for you to be fasting too much. Um, maybe once those kids can kind of take care of themselves, you can start to start to do that. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of the athletes that listen probably need to be reminded when they're fasting, when anything is too much, you know, the Goldilocks effect for everything. Yeah. When is, you know, less is more, but when is that too low than not to create the positive effect, get the cell autophagy or just to make sure we're getting some gut healing and some fat burning. But mm -hmm. when it's, you know, you're doing too much, that's like, okay, that's overloading my HP axis, my beaker of stress, my cup is overfilling. Yeah, and it is N equals one. And you have to really pay attention. And I think that's what the important part of fasting that, you know, I think is a lot too much for a lot of people. I know someone was doing all um, October, November, December, she was doing this alternate day, 48 hour fast. And I was like, mm. and I just thought it was like, isn't that a little too much to, to keep doing that over and over again for a female? Mm -hmm. So wh what do we do as females and female athletes who have additional stress, or I guess that's any, yeah. you know, what's different that you've learned over the last three years of the challenges and all your research you've been writing, all these great articles, we'll put the links in the show notes for the part one and part two, fasting for women. And we touched, I'll put the link to our last year's podcast because we did talk about this yeah. in one episode. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one is super in depth on this topic specifically. So definitely listen to, to that one from last year if you're interested in fasting for women. And we'll also be putting out more. Uh, I'm doing another video this year on our channel on Instagram. Okay. So go follow Kiana on Instagram and you can see that and kind of leave comments and ask me questions directly. But when I talk about fasting for women, I, I break it out into two groups. So one is premenopausal women. You haven't hit menopause yet. You still have your period. You still have all those reproductive hormones um, that, that can get affected by fasting or calorie shifts. The other group is pre or uh, postmenopausal women. So you've you've and of course there's groups in between there that that are a little bit trickier, like perimenopause, and you're actually going through menopause, and that just really depends on the female. Um, but for simplicity, I break it out into pre and postmenopause. Um, premenopausal women need to be much more careful with fasting, and uh, if you're an athlete and you're premenopausal, be super careful yes. with fasting. And I I would say. Um, you know, 12, 12 to 14 hours, if you're going to do it every day, max, um, I, you know, even that's kind of towing the line a little bit, you could do a, a, an occasional longer fast once a month, once a quarter or something like that. But you really need to be careful what your body needs most as a young female athlete is fuel. So give it fuel, you know, don't deprive your body of fuel. Um, and, and if you're, if you're an athlete and you're doing a lot of fasting, um, typically the negative side effects will show up as, uh, your period starts to become irregular. You lose your period altogether. You know, that female athlete triad, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in there. <laughs> yep. 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 We all have, um, you either start to become too lean or you actually may start to put on weight. It can go either way for, for women. Um, you're fatigued all the time. Your recovery is super low. Your performance starts to decline. Um, 
hair loss, acne, all of these things typically mean there's some sort of energy imbalance there. And I would, I would stay away from, from fasting if you have a high activity load in, in your pre-menopause. Well, that's so, impacting your whole hormone cycle, your yes. hormone imbalance and HPA axis dysfunction or adrenal exhaustion we used to talk about, but messes yeah. up your adrenals, mess up your thyroid too. Everything's connected and mm -hmm. all your hormones get. Yeah. Weak. Yeah. And, and what we talked about last year in the podcast is how women are specifically affected by fasting. And that's why I talk about them. Uh, specifically <laughs> is, is, you know, a lot of the studies that are done that talk about all these benefits of fasting that we have inside at Kian a lot are either done on mice or men. Uh, there's hardly any studies that are done on young women of premenopausal age. And the few that we do have actually show negative effects uh, on, on women's reproductive hormones from fasting or any type of caloric shift. So that could be calorie restriction as well. I kind of lump all those things in together. And the you know shifts in calories kind of affect the precursor the precursors to our reproductive hormones. So it'll it may take a little while for anything to actually affect you because you're kind of changing the the upstream of those hormones. But after a while, if you're if you're doing it long enough and you're kind of putting your body in that stress, you'll start to see those negative hormonal effects. Um, so just pay attention for sure. I, you know, I don't know everyone and I don't know their body, but I've done all these things wrong. So <laughs> no. I, I know that happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's what I, I say a lot when I'm interviewed in podcasts, like I was doing all the right things and I, you know, threw my body hormones in a hole in 2013 and never been my, they're still low. So yeah. it is, you know, being careful. And that's what I feel like it's my purpose since I have that habit to me to say, watch out, you know, N equals one. And as a lot of it, it's looking at your genetic snips as well as so epigenetics, but it's so fascinating to me, you know, how so many people don't have that awareness until it's like, okay, it's not too late, but you're getting close to digging yourself in that hole. But I was doing fasted workouts. I was doing a lot of cardio and strength training and yoga and I was doing low carb meals and being really strict and doing, you know, 10 gallons of bulletproof coffee a day probably didn't help. And, you know, all these things you think are just, good for you. Just to empathize with you for a second though, Debbie, that, uh, that is what we've been told for yeah. so long is like going to make us healthy, uh, perform well, metabolically active, all of the, all of these things that we want, but that all of that research and typically the advice is for men. No, <laughs> yeah. That's what so. I love what you're doing and what Dr. Stacy Sims, you know, brought to a lot to light of the, mm -hmm. the science, you know, not scientific, but the physiological differences between a man and a woman and all yeah. the research. Hello, you know, everything I read is okay, this is for men. And you always have to take that account. I'm not a man. <laughs> I don't yes. have the hormones that they have, and we are designed to reproduce and our body will think things are more of a threat and put us in emergency mode and everything on hold. So I think we have to take that in account when you're following everything on social media and trying to copy what other people are doing, especially if they're not exactly like you and they don't have your stressors, but if they're a different gender, it's going to be a totally different experience for you. So just be aware. And that's why I love the Keon challenge because we do look at, you know, if you're a female, be aware of this, this is great for males and, you know, tweak this a little bit, but that's why I personally will be doing challenge next week, but doing more of a bone broth gut healing protocol mm -hmm. in my eight hour eating window and just start to do that because think of what I, I'm doing now is kind of this intermittent fasting during the week, five, two, and I kind of go lower carb and higher on the weekends if needed. And, but for me, it's like change it up by doing more liquids, do my Dr. Axe. I have a bunch of these keto feast shakes, bonafide provisions. I love their bone broth and adding Those are good. the oil. And yeah, and they're actually in Encinitas right where I am now. So it's funny. It's like, ah, oh, I love their bone broth. But anyways, the fasting for you, what would you do? What are you doing next week? Or are you doing the challenge? How are you going to do it? 
Yeah, so I almost always do the the caloric liquid fast. Um, typically three days have gone five before, but it feels like a little too much for me at times. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do I'll do three days of the the MediClear because I still have some from last year uh, and bone broth as well as well as coffee, black coffee. So that'll be that'll usually be my little uh, combo for the three days and. Um, this week I am to kind of prepare, obviously not doing any alcohol or sugar or anything like that. Um, and kind of shortening my feeding windows every day a little bit too, to just kind of get, get my body prepared for, for next week so that it doesn't totally suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, well, that's what I'm planning on doing. And, and I've been, I've been doing something like that for, for many years now. Um, and it's, I mean, it's made a huge difference in, my autoimmune disease, my skin health, my gut health, all of these things. Like I, I love doing it every year because I feel so much better afterwards. Yeah. And I just, I think, you know, doing a, a 24 hour fast is that, you know, something you do. I know Ben does it. He says every Sunday to Monday. And I just, I'm like, is that too much for me? And, and for me, fasting exercise, I always have to experiment like, okay, I think it goes back to us type AAA personalities that they're driven <laughs> ambitious higher performers that go, okay, more is better. Like, okay, I'm going to override that feeling of hunger, but what if that's a stressor and going to cause me, you know, take two steps back, one step forward. So I have to, you have to really experiment what is good for you in this time of your life. And it, we're still in a stressful environment with the whole COVID pandemic stuff for people get that more stress and politics. And I think you have to go, okay, is a 24 hour fast and then do the rest of it intermittent fasting. Is that ideal for me or should 24 hours, is that beneficial? So it's like, yeah. is it good or bad for me? It's so individualized. Yeah. yeah. And you only, you only know until you try, I guess. Uh, and, and just try to be really honest with yourself too. Don't, don't push through it just because you think you have to um, really be honest with yourself. Ask you, ask yourself why you're fasting in the first place. Good and question. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why, why are you, why are you doing this? Is it, um, is it for some of those benefits that I mentioned is, is it to, to have some sort of mental or spiritual challenge? Um, what is the purpose? And I think when, when you connect to your why before you do something like a fast, it makes it that much more powerful for you as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that much more just aligned with, with your motivation. So I think that's a really good question to, to ask yourself before doing something like a fast. And yeah. unfortunately you, you know, you, you'll know if you've ever done it <laughs> and there's only one way to know, but, um, definitely just pay attention to your body and, and how it's reacting to. Well, how to would you know? Practice. Do you feel like crap or should you feel good? I mean, how do you, you know, like, okay, next month you don't get your period or how, what are some big yeah. things behind that? So like, I, much? I think that's the tricky part with fasting is, you know, if it, it, it there's part of it that's not going to feel comfortable and that's, that's where we grow in it. Yeah. That's, that's some of the benefits from fasting is it, separates us from that um reliance on food that behavior of wanting to eat uh you know these these things that kind of chain us to the fridge sometimes you know and and so i think that's part of the benefit of it but it it it, it does feel uncomfortable and you will get hungry if, if you're doing it for the first time you'll get those hunger pangs uh but but hunger should feel like a wave if you're fasting. So it shouldn't, it should kind of come and go. So typically if you've never fasted before, you'll get hungry around your normal meal times. It, it's kind of like your body just knows you typically eat then you may not even be hungry. Yes. Your, your circadian rhythm knows when to expect food. So you're going to get hungry around lunch, um, should last 30 minutes to an hour. If it lasts longer than that, um, really pay attention and, and say like, Oh, maybe, you know, maybe I need to cut it a little bit short today. Um, so that, that's one thing to look out for. It, it really should come and go. It, your, your hunger should not persist for more than an hour. So that's um, a good tip though, that everyone should yeah. take note of that because I think a lot of people are so driven that they override that and go, okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to get through this. I'm tough. I'm not yeah. a whip. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do the five days and screw myself up and deal with it later. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a man, you may be able to do that. Like you could probably push through it and just be just fine. So if you're a man listening to this, 
go for right. it. <laughs> if you're a woman listening to this, especially a young, a young woman, I wouldn't push through it. The, the implications are just too, uh, yeah, there's just too many potential side effects from, from doing that. And, um, you don't need to really, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, I guess that that's what I would say. I don't remember the original question though. <laughs> just when you know when it's, you're doing too much. Like, oh, having, right. So I think having water and have some sea salt in it is a great thing. Cause a lot of times you're just dehydrated Yeah. and you just might feel better with a glass of water and just, I'd put a big splash or pinch of sea salt in it. Yep. So wa- dr- drink lots of liquids um, that will for sure kind of keep those hunger pangs away and keep you hydrated. The salt is great because of the electrolytes. So you'll, you'll get dehydrated when you're not um, getting a lot of salt in, especially if you're drinking a lot of water too. Mm-hmm. So a pinch of salt, some electrolytes that don't have any added sugar or anything like that in them are great. Um, and then to kind of get through those, those hunger pains, if you've done it a few times and, and you know what to look for, anything with caffeine in it will, will typically uh, kind of shut down those cravings. It, caffeine, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? The thing with your appetite. Appetite. What is it? It satiates. <laughs> it satiates your appetite. I I didn't get much sleep last night, so my brain's kind of slow. But not having um, caffeine too late. Like if you're a slower or fast oxidizer yeah. of caffeine. But I tried to. I had a friend was just saying she didn't sleep well, but she's drinking coffee at three o'clock. I'm like, well, maybe mm. it's a coffee or you know computer devices at night. But yes, you know, really Good making sure you know when to shut off the caffeine part. If you're having caffeine, I say like twelve o'clock. Hundred percent. Then after that. Yeah, and some people even find that de- decaffeinated teas or coffee too can can shut down that that hunger a little bit too. So it may just be drinking something. Um, sparkling water is really great for appetite satiating. So you can kind of try all those things. But yeah, you're totally right. Stick stick to morning for the caffeine for sure. And another thing I was going to add, you were talking about the why earlier. And, and for me, it's, I think, gut health. And if we go over, you know, how important gut health is for our immune system that are, say, 70% of our immune systems in our gut wall lining, how important it is for us to make sure we're rebuilding the mucosal barrier in our gut and healing those holes for most everyone has some level of leaky gut. Mm-hmm. And that, to me, should be Like, yes, we want to be fat burners, but you really need to be improving your immune system so much right now. Any time is good, but just really this time in our world. And so me, that's a big motivator. Like, okay, you know, what can I do once a quarter? Do a a bone broth fast. If it's in, you know, my intermittent fast, but having lots of bone broth, three cups a day and, and doing that. But as you said, I couldn't do that for five days and not eat anything. I'm not, I can't do that. But like one day, just liquid next day, have a meal, kind of the alternate day fast to me is more doable mentally that, okay, tomorrow I'm having food, but today's just a liquid day. Tomorrow I'm going to do my one main meal meal day and have my broth. And that to me is sustainable Mm -hmm. rather than just thinking, oh my God, five days of no solid food would kill me. And then all you do is thinking of eating and then overeating. So I think to me, that's just my tip is what I'm doing is a kind of alternate day fasting. And I'm going to do like three cups of bone broth each day in my eight hour eating window. So I get my 16 hours to 20 hours. I fast, but yeah, that's that's a great, that's a great strategy because you as someone who's really active can then still have your active days on your, on your regular feeding days, but then you can kind of get those, those gut healing benefits during the days where you're just doing the bone broth and kind of take it easy on the exercise. So I think that's a great approach as well. Yeah. And adding in your bone broth, I you know I was looking at the mushroom chonga, putting stuff that I've been using the mud water coffee. Have you heard of that? Oh, I've heard of it, but I haven't it's tried it. It's literally like mud, the bottom of my cup, but it has all the mushrooms in it. And it's kind of a ah. chai tea, chai cacao, but like, I don't know, five different mushrooms and all this stuff in it. So I was reading about and Ben in his book, I was typing the notes, chonga mushroom extract and adding some oregano oil, even in your bone broth to really make it this immune boosting gut healing soup. You can have a tea, but it's just, have, uh, you, have you done that before? The oregano oil in the bone broth seems like it'd be no, gross. I think it'd be awful, but I, I don't recommend that. that. <laughs> I was reading it in the boundless book, page 361 about doing that, but Ben seems like he can do anything and not gross out, but Oh, I've seen him. I've seen him eat some really weird stuff. So yes, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. 
So I would say like, I'm taking the capsules, the oregano oil, not the liquid, but the chunks of mushrooms are mushrooms into your bone broth or MCT oil. I can do, but that, um, anyway, so the next question was exercising. You know, I've for years have done fasted morning workouts, but I think, you know, doing a um, little bit less, doing kind of a 45 minute session in the morning, the low heart rate, if it's a walk or a nice, you know, walk run, something that's not going to be so strenuous and exhausting in your body when you're adding this type of good stress, we don't want to add too many stressors. So exercising mm -hmm. each day, like moving, getting your walking in, but don't try to do anything really hard, higher heart rates or tempo speed work that week, right? Yeah, typically steady state, like low intensity cardio is going to be the perfect thing to do fasted in the morning, especially if you're trying to target that fat loss, because that's, that's sort of the fat loss zone anyways. So you don't really want to uh, get your heart rate up super high and do that hit or like really heavy strength training fasted because um, you're, you're spiking your cortisol then and your cortisol is probably already a little bit high if you're fasted. So that's not great for your stress or your hormones or really for your waistline. Um, so it's kind of doing the opposite effect for sure. Steady state, like low intensity aerobic cardio is great. And I would even add doing a yoga challenge, or if you're going to do something like this five day fast, I would think of it as fasting from stress and yeah. you know, elimination diet of all things, like cutting back your time, social media and time on TV and maybe do yoga every morning. I do Travis Elliott inner dimension TV. That's like $10 a month. And they have all these different videos on there. I have on our iPad, we do a 30 minute 45 minute yoga in the morning and doing a yin yoga at nighttime and going for a walk. And I like to tell my clients breakfast, lunch, dinner means move. Doesn't mean eat. It means move outside mm. ideally and make that more movement throughout the day rather than just, you know, a lot of people work out 30, 40 minutes or whatever the hour, and then they sit the rest of the day. So I rather you do some light movement throughout the day. If it's morning, lunchtime, evening, let's figure out what you can do to get outside and get, you know, walk around the block or something. Movement. Totally. Yeah. But it, what's that called? LIS? LIS movement? Low intensity, steady state? Um, Haven't heard it, that, it, but there's a name for everything. <laughs> yeah, there are acronyms for everything. Yeah. And I mean, I, so I wear my, my aura ring and the days where I move all day, but don't necessarily have like a traditional workout um, versus the days where I kind of sit around and work and then do like a hard workout, I burn way more calories on the, fir the first. So if I'm just walking around, doing stuff in the house, taking my dog for a walk, walking to get the mail, way more calories than just doing like a 30 minute high intensity aerobic exercise That's workout. Awesome. Yeah, yes. I think that's a good note for people because I know so many people just work out once and, you know, we went for a run and then we're getting at lunchtime. I'm like, okay, I got to take a break and go do something. And we're blessed to have this new house that has pretty much a park up the hilltop. Oh. And so I go up my stairs and go check up the hilltop and I just get this walking up and down the stairs and, and move. But I think just staying working out in the morning, I just, I still, my body wants to get outside and do something. And then at nighttime when I'm done work, like, all right, let's go for a walk or something. And it's mm -hmm. good to see that on our ring. I don't have one yet, but on my list this year. <laughs> They're but pretty cool. The benefits of it. Yeah. And not to, not to knock like a traditional workout, um, because you, you still want to build muscle and, and get those cardiovascular benefits from, from a harder workout, but it, you know, for activity and, and calorie burn purposes and, uh, just kind of being a little bit nicer on your hormones, just move all day. It's perfect. Yeah move more and lift, lift heavy things is my thing. <laughs> yeah. I think that's Mark Sisson's thing too. I've heard him say that a yeah, few times. That's good. All right. So we're wrapping up on time. I'll put everything on the links. We've got your blog that you wrote all fasting for women, part one and two, there's breaking a fast mindfully, all making, making fasting easier blog, just coffee break a fast blog and we have and benefits of fasting. And we have a new one today. What breaks a fast? Yes, You're, you'll like that one. That one's yeah. like literally everything you could possibly think of. And if it breaks your fast or not. <laughs> What's the number one question? Probably, can I have cream on my coffee? Because that's always mine. Like, just it's always, 
it's like always coffee related. That, that is, so that's why we have a, an entire blog post dedicated to that one. But then this one covers coffee, tea, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, bone broth, supplements, oh, I gum. I haven't read it yet. Yeah, it's, it's a beast. It's and a good all, one. All of those break your fast? Um, so we broke it down by, by fast. Oh, so okay. it's super in depth. So does it break your fast for if you're doing the non-caloric? Does it break your fast if you're doing caloric liquid? Does it break your fast if you're intermittent fasting? Oh, so did you write that? It, um, no, I helped my writer on my team write it. So Mike, Mike is Mike is responsible for this this beastly post. That's a lot of research you have to do and put that all together. Oh yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Well, anything else you want to add that we forgot? We, I think we covered most all the stuff and we'll put the link for last year's show, but the, everything's in the ebook once people sign up. So people have to sign yeah. up for the, the challenge and I'll put the link how to register for it. Mm -hmm. And you get the fasting decoding, what's it called? The e fasting decoded ebook. So it's 50 plus pages on yeah. all things fasting. Everything's it's, in there that you need to know. Everything is plus, in there. You, and if it's you sign up, you get stuff every day, right? Yes. So if it's not in the ebook, it's on our blog or it's in our videos that'll be on our Instagram channel or it's in our emails. So, you know, we have a ton of content coming out and yeah, the, the challenge starts January 11th. Is this getting published this, this week? January 11th? Um, yeah. Friday. Okay. Seven, eight. It'll be out. What's today? Wednesday? How do I know what day it is? I think it's Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Every day is Wednesday now. <laughs> but yeah, the, the challenge starts Monday, January 11th. So if you have a chance to uh, click on Debbie's link and sign up. It's completely free. Uh, when you sign up, you'll get an email uh, with a download of the ebook, and then you'll start to get our daily emails for the challenge starting on Monday. And when uh, when the challenge starts again, you can participate with any kind of fast that you want. Um, it could be one in our ebook. It could be kind of one that Debbie described. Whatever you want, whatever works for you. Um, and then every day on our Instagram channel, if you follow at Keon, we're putting out educational videos from fasting experts that are about 10 minutes long that cover a certain topic. So make sure you go watch those. We'll also, if you don't have Instagram, we'll email out the link to the YouTube video as well. I'll be doing one on Monday, Fasting for Women. So if you want to know more about this topic, uh, you can check our Instagram there. And we've got a bunch of doctors and psychotherapists kind of jumping on and do some educational content for us uh -huh. as well. Yeah. That's on so, Instagram Live, you'll have it? or No, it'll just be on our feed. Um, Instagram Live's just logistically tricky and uh, I don't watch them. So I, I don't know if anyone else does. <laughs> <laughs> I know I don't but my husband does I'm like where how do you find that I can't find it you do it and then it's gone and so that's well you. it's like I don't want to watch it right now I want to yeah. watch it when I want to watch it <laughs> exactly especially if you're recording it you can't see it <laughs> yeah definitely and I didn't even cover anything for postmenopausal women um but you can definitely go to uh the links to the articles that Debbie will share about fasting for women and there's mm -hmm. Part two of the Fasting for Women series, this, the second half talks all about postmenopausal women. So if you're in that category, go check that one out yeah. too. And Dr. Anna, we've done lots of podcasts with her. And oh, Anna Quebecca? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah, she does keto green and does intermittent fast, but to kind of focus on the menopausal, postmenopausal women. Perfect. Program, so help with that too. So thank you so much for your time today. And you are always an expert in everything and all behind the scenes at Keon researching and writing and doing your own health coaching as well still, right? Oh, no, no. All my time is devoted to Keon now. <laughs> they take all of it. <laughs> Maybe someday. <laughs> and other fasts or not fast, but challenges for 2021. Are we doing the water intermittent fasting? We're we will cut down and cold water therapy fasting. We will probably do another cold thermo challenge in the summer. We may do a third one that's still TBD. So uh, yeah, just follow us on Instagram and you'll you'll kind of get all the news of when we launch those. The cold yeah. thermo challenge is very fun. Yeah, I do the Tabata challenge, hot cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cold baths for me. I'm the wimp. Yep, me too. So, all right. Thanks, Kelsey. Happy New Year. Thanks, Debbie. Happy New Year.